Panzergrenadier Division Großdeutschland, also commonly referred to simply Großdeutschland Division, was an elite combat unit of the German army. In May of 1943, with the addition of armored personnel carriers and the new Panther medium tanks, the division had more armored vehicles than most full-strength Panzer divisions. It had 384 tanks, including the usual Panzer III and IV tanks in its organic Panzer regiment, and 200 new Panther tanks. So this division was the main attack force. Two Panther battalions were formed before the offensive, Panzer Abteilung 51 and Panzer Abteilung 52. The crews consisted of very few veterans with combat experience and the command elements were mostly made up of untested reserve officers. To make matters worse, the two battalions not only lacked combat experience, but had conducted just platoon level battle training and had received no instruction in battalion level radio procedures. On the opening day of the offensive, backed by a heavy barrage from the artillery and led by 350 tanks supported by infantry, the Großdeutschland division advanced on a two-mile front. Early in the morning, the German units started the assault across the entire front. At 8.30 hours, after replenishing ammunition stocks and fueling up, the Panzer Regiment went on the assault. The Großdeutschland Panzer Regiment attacked first, followed behind by the Panther tanks. 184 Panthers, altogether 268 tanks, took part in this initial attack. The two Panther battalions advanced north from their assembly area towards the division's first day objective, Cherkaskoye. The Panthers encountered a major obstacle being the 80 meter wide Berezovny River. The ravine was an impressive anti-tank ditch, filled with water 8 to 10 meters wide and 3 to 4 meters deep. The ravine itself and the area around it was covered by barbed wire and mines. The Großdeutschland division decided to seek another crossing site but failed to inform the Panther units. Around 9 o'clock, Panzer Abteilung 51 approached the ravine and after some confusion attempted to cross. Immediately Panthers were bogged down on the muddy banks of the ravine and some were disabled by anti-tank mines. The two leading companies were immobilized at the edge of the ravine and then Soviet artillery showered the area. The transmission on the Panthers was too weak to navigate in mud and leaking fuel pumps caused numerous engine fires. Eventually, German pioneers were able to clear the mines and establish a ford, but it was difficult to get the 45-ton Panthers across. After struggling across the ravine, the Panthers fought off a Soviet counterattack. Ironically, the first Soviet tanks which the new Panthers engaged were not the T-34 tanks, but US-built land-leased M3 Lee tanks. These tanks were no match for the Panthers and six of them were knocked out before the remaining withdrew. The Germans took the village of Cherkaskoye by the evening with losing 18 Panthers. Hill 232, located northeast of the town, was to be taken next, but was impossible due to numerous dug-in Soviet tanks surrounding the hill. The Panthers stopped and waited. The tally for the day was six Soviet tanks, three heavy anti-tank guns destroyed, and one ground attack plane shot down. 
the capture of Cherkaskoye, when added to the success of the 3rd Panzer Division on the left flank, which had managed to seize two villages, meant that a considerable hole had been torn in the Soviets' first line of defense. At the end of the offensive, Panther losses were high and neared two-thirds of the tanks, of which at least 20% were irreparable losses. The Großdeutschland division had only 80 tanks still fit for combat. After the Kursk offensive was cancelled, the division was transferred back to Army Group Center and resumed its role as a mobile reserve. <laughs>